Hey guys, so today I wanted to do a review on the lock sack bags. And these are pretty similar to what we're all used to, the Ziploc bag, uh, which we probably all use in some way or shape or form in our kits to keep things dry. But the great thing about the lock sack bag is that they use a different type of film, which is a lot thicker and a lot more durable than the regular Ziploc material. And also the seal is a lot more sturdy than on a regular Ziploc bag. So when I stand on a regular size Ziploc bag, it just gives way and it pops and explodes and you can't ever use it again. But when I stand on a lock sack bag, I can use it again. It doesn't pop, it doesn't do anything like that. And I'm 150 pounds, so that's pretty incredible. The bags use a film that's puncture resistant and the op sack bag, which is the odor proof version of the lock sack bag, also contains smells a lot better and is meant for use in back country where there's bears and that sort of thing. So I'll be testing that and I'll also be showing you guys how puncture resistant these things are. So stay tuned. So for this test, since Zip really likes sausages, I brought out a bunch of sausages to do this test. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a control which is gonna be an empty bag. And then we're gonna have a bag with sausages in it, without a plastic bag of any sort. And then we're gonna have the lock sack, op sack bag. And this is odor proof, so if it works, you shouldn't be able to sense this at all. And then we're gonna use a standard freezer gallon size Ziploc bag, and we're gonna have sausages in this. And again, we're gonna put this inside of a paper bag so that it is also shielded from Zippy's view. Zip, do you notice anything? He's a little bit bashful about it because he's not supposed to do this at home. But obviously, zip. This one has sausage in it without a bag. Zip. You want your reward, baby? Zip. Look what's in there. Oh, yes. Now you have to find other sausage. I'm gonna leave those in their bags for about another hour and see if any more of that smell seeps through any of the plastic. So stay tuned for that. He seems to have a lot more interest in this bag than that bag. That bag, I think you're just seeing it feels the same as that. But he went to this one first and then he went to it a second time for a prolonged period. And so, yep, yeah, and he's still poking at that bag. So let's open this one up. I kind of lost track of which one held which. And that is the Ziploc bag. Yep, so that's your treat, Zippy. And just to show you in the same shot, this bag, it's a little bit soggy at the moment. contains the op sack. Basically what I've concluded from that was in the beginning, you're not gonna be able to tell too much of a difference between the Ziploc and the op sack bag. Both of them will contain odors uh, for that short period of time. But uh, you know, an hour and a half or so later, once things start to seep through the plastic, the op sack bag really shines. And so Zip wasn't too interested in that bag 
but he was interested in the Ziploc. Um, you know, if you're going to be using these bags to store food in a backcountry setting, I would always suggest still putting it up in a tree because there might be a chance of contaminating the outside of the bag with your hands that you've touched food with. And if that happens, then you're going to be SOL when a bear comes and takes your food or runs you off your camp with all your supplies. So um, that's pretty much that. So the next thing I wanted to do was test the puncture resistance between a regular gallon size Ziploc bag and the lock sack material. So I'm using a 5.56 round, this is a 55 grain, as a relatively pointy point, but uh, you know, it's not something that is like a needle which would pretty much go through anything. But this is probably about as pointy as an object you would put in a bag like this. Uh, so I'm just gonna see how this goes through the bag and pretty much with no pressure at all, I was able to go through a Ziploc bag. And so we'll do the same thing with the lock sack bag. And so I've opened it up so I'm only using one layer. And it takes quite a bit of pressure. Holy cow. Is that still? That's still intact and it's still stretching. And now it's through. So it's pretty much a no-brainer that a lock sack bag has a lot better puncture resistance than a regular Ziploc bag. Um, you know, I would use still Ziploc bags inside of a larger lock sack bag just so that I can have some organization. But in terms of keeping your gear dry and safe from the elements, a lock sack bag is definitely the way to go. So because these bags are very puncture resistant and the holes that are made are not prone to growing into bigger holes, there's a really good application for these smaller lock sack bags in a wilderness first aid kit. And so in my first aid kit, I carry an irrigation syringe, but the problem with those is, you know, they're kind of big, they're bulky, you don't pack flat, but fortunately these things do. So what you would do to use these as an irrigation device is to fill it up with as hot of water as the patient can handle. And then in the corner, you can poke a hole with a safety pin, which I hope you already have and you can apply a great amount of pressure into a small stream. So if you have a, a nasty cut or a blister, that's the way to do it. Overall, I really like these bags. Not only are they a great way to keep your gear dry and safe from the elements, but they also have a lot of other functions as well. You can take a full-size bag like this, have an empty one, fill it up with some air, put a t-shirt over it, and use it as a pillow for when you're backpacking or that sort of thing, where you don't want to have a bulky sort of thing to carry around, but you want to have your head off the ground because maybe you have a neck problem or maybe the, the ground is a little bit bumpy. Um, you can use these to carry water, and you can even put a small tablet in the corner for a really quick way to gather water and purify it at the same time. As you saw just a second ago, you can put it in a medical kit and use it in replace of an irrigation syringe to clean out broken blisters, large cuts, that sort of thing, to make sure you don't get infection. So pretty much the possibilities are endless for a piece of equipment like this. They're inexpensive, they're reusable. Because they're a little bit thicker, they're easier to clean out than a Ziploc bag and dry out. But like all things, these are not a permanent solution. You're gonna have to replace them after time kind of like how you would uh, rotate band-aids in a medical kit. But for the price and for the durability and utility of these things, it's definitely worth it. So like always, please comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, take care out there. Bye.